We do have a quorum today, so we'll proceed with the agenda as has been publicly advertised. And I will note that today's meeting is being live streamed um, on the NCPC website. Uh, agenda item number one is a report of the chairman, and I'll just note that uh, the NCPC last night held a public meeting for the 10th Street and Banneker Connection concepts um, as part of the Echo the Southwest Echo District. It was held in this um, in this room, and overall, people are very supportive of the work that the staff and the Echo District Task Force has done uh, to date, and the commission will review this project in January. Um, and I attended the meeting last night, as did uh, Commissioner White. Um, so that's it for my report. Any questions? Agenda item number two is a report of the Executive Director, Mr. Acosta. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have one item. Uh, I'd like to point out that the NCPC final report and official action for the Height Master Plan uh, was transmitted to the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee last Wednesday, November 27th. Uh, you do have a copy of the report uh, in front of you. And also for the public, uh, the report has been posted on our website. On Monday, December 2nd, the uh, House uh, Committee on Oversight and Government Reform held a hearing on the Height Master Plan reports provided by the NCPC as well as the District of Columbia. I provided testimony as well as uh, DC Office of Planning Director Harry Tregoning. You also have received uh, copies of my testimony. Uh, the committee is continuing to accept public comments uh, through December 10th, uh, so if members of the public want to submit additional comments regarding um, the study, uh, they could also submit those up to the Hill. And we'll also keep the commission informed of any future actions by the House Committee. Uh, while many different viewpoints were expressed through this process, the height study highlighted the importance everyone places on the design and character of Washington and the city's future. I'd like to take this opportunity just to thank the commission uh, for your continued interest and engagement in this um, important effort uh, by attending the many meetings out in the community as well as participating during the uh, formal hearings. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the staff here at NCPC for their good work, uh, fine work actually, uh, Lucy Kemp, uh, Mike Sherman, Julia Coster, Angela Marr, Ann Schuyler, Will Herbig, Christine Somm, uh, Maureen Tai, and our uh, Office of Public Engagement staff uh, for their public outreach effort. It was done in a very compressed timeline and a lot of good work was done. I'd also like to thank uh, our partners at the DC Office of Planning uh, for, uh, for working with us on this project, uh, Harry Turgoting, uh, Tanya Stern, uh, her chief of staff, Art Rogers, and I don't know if I'm forgetting anybody else. Uh, on your team? Many people on the GIS okay. side, but thank you, okay. I'll let them know. <laughs> okay. uh, but it was really a collaborative effort, uh, and I think it, we did an amazing amount of work uh, in terms of producing visual models and the economic analysis and all the other things uh, in a very short period of time. So I do thank uh, our colleagues at the Office of Planning for uh, doing a lot of that work. Also, I'd like to take uh, this opportunity to acknowledge uh, our appreciation to the many groups and uh, citizens out there who participated. Um, and provided their input throughout this process. And I know that it took a lot of time out of their busy schedules to do so, uh, but it was very much appreciated um, as part of this effort. So thank you very much. Any questions or comments for Mr. Costa? Agenda item number three is a legislative update and Ms. Schuyler. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have nothing to report today. Thank you. And agenda item number four is the consent calendar, and there are three items on the consent calendar. Agenda item number 4A is the draft master plan for the Naval Support Facility in Arlington. Agenda item number 4B is the medical center addition at the Naval Support Activity um, in Bethesda. And agenda item number 4C is a highway plan amendment. Um, any questions on the consent calendar? Hearing none, is there a motion on the consent calendar? It's been moved and okay. seconded. All in favor of the consent calendar say aye. 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 Opposed, no. It's passed. Um, <clears throat> we now move to the open session or to the uh, action item, and there's only one item on the agenda. And at this time, I'm going to turn this over to Vice Chairman Miller, who will chair this for the agenda item, um, which is the street uh, car barn training center. I have recused myself from participating in this matter because of an appearance of a potential conflict stemming from my private sector uh, employment. So I will turn this over to Mr. Miller and refrain from discussion or action. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, agenda item number five is the uh, DC Streetcar Barn Training Center. And uh, Mr. Hart uh, has the presentation.
sorry about that, the new system, and always have uh, problems with that. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the Commission. The District's Department of Transportation has submitted the preliminary site and building plans for the D.C. Streetcar Barn and Training Center, which is uh, located in Benning Road, uh, at the corner of Benning Road and 26th Street in Northeast. This project is a component of the One City Streetcar Line, which is part of DDOT's 22-mile uh, priority streetcar system. Uh, while the Commission has not seen the entire system, DDOT has agreed to come to the next meeting to present uh, this system um, and a few other things at our um, January meeting. So we'll hear more about this uh, entire system in about a month. So here's the uh, overall streetcar system, which is uh, the 22-mile priority system. Um, there are both uh, east-west segments as well as uh, north-south north -south segments. The east-west segment, um, also known as the One City Line, uh, is intended to connect um, the uh, Benning Road area um, through uh, D.C. To, um, uh, to Georgetown. <clears throat> the uh, streetcar tracks and stations along uh, both Be H Street and Benning Road uh, were installed in 2011 after being reviewed and approved by the Commission in 2007. The Commission action uh, at that time noted, among other things, that the streetcar, the, the streetscape improvements for H Street did not include um, uh, overhead uh, catenary wires. The Commission also noted that the DDOT would need to return to approve the other elements of the streetcar system uh, in the future. The Streetcar Barn Training Center is sited on the northwest corner of the intersection of Benning Road and 26th Street, as, as you see here in the dotted line. It is located west of Langston Golf Course, south of Spingarn High School, and uh, east of Langston Terrace Dwellings. Uh, Spingarn High School was built uh, in the early 1950s and was closed at the end of last school year. It was conceived of as a part of a larger campus to educate uh, African American students in this part of the, uh, of the city. This campus, known as Education Hill, includes an elementary school, a junior high school, a vocational school, as well as Spingarn uh, High School itself. Uh, this was recently designated a local historic landmark and is eligible for listing in the uh, National Register. The D.C. Historic Preservation Office and DDOT uh, entered into a memorandum of, of agreement on this site because of the adverse impacts um, to the historic resources that were identified um, by DDOT. As stipulated, uh, as one of the stipulations in the MOA, DDOT submitted the car barn site, or this site, for Historic Preservation and Review Board review, um, which occurred in um, uh, October 3rd, and at that time, the HPRB uh, approved the concept design for this, uh, for this project. Um, as, you, as you can see, this is a, uh, a, a grassy site. This, it's a two-acre site, uh, mainly grassy with a few scattered trees. Here are a few images taken recently at the site within the last few weeks. Uh, the top slide shows uh, this site with Spingarn High School in the, on the right-hand side, the right-hand uh, image, and Langston uh, Terrace Dwellings on the, uh, on the left. In the uh, uh, kind of mid-ground is the uh, construction for, the, um, for, this, for this project. Um, the bottom slide shows a, is a viewing looking west along Benning Road and uh, shows the streetcar tracks as well as the catenary poles that are, um, that are being installed in the median. DDOT states that this project has two phases. Uh, the first, um, which you see some of the construction um, going on now, is to lay the tracks for the streetcar yard and other site infrastructure as well as uh, regrading that needed to occur. The next phase will be constructed, um, uh, the next phase of construction will be the actual streetcar barn and training center, and that's not slated to begin until next year. The site um, plan and landscape plan are shown in this image. Um, there is uh, a 14,500 square foot uh, car barn training center, a um, streetcar storage yard, which is to the north of the car barn uh, training center, a traction power substation, which is um, that TPSS on the western side or left portion of the, uh, the slide, uh, as well as uh, some employee parking. Uh, there will be several tracks that will um, uh, connect into or go into the, the car barn. These will be for um, when vehicles need to be maintained or, or for maintenance purposes. 
Um, there is a, another track for um, a, a wash area for the, uh, street, for the streetcars, and then the remaining track areas are for um, streetcar storage when they are not in service. The uh, site will be um, fenced for security. Uh, access to Benning Road for the streetcars will be signalized and located on the western portion of the site, um, kind of bottom left here. Um, and that's how the uh, streetcars will um, access onto Benning Road. A track spur on the eastern side of the site will be, um, uh, is planned to be constructed in the future to allow for access on the, uh, on the eastern side. And it'll, uh, there's a line, there's a, a track that will go down uh, 26th Street down to, uh, down to Benning. <clears throat> Here's an um, uh, artist rendition of the, uh, of the site, um, bird's eye view. Uh, it's, uh, I'll, I'll note that the training center has been in incorporated into the design to provide uh, DC residents a vocational opportunity to learn about um, and working and, and, how, and how to work in, a, uh, in the new transit system. As this is the first street streetcar barn to be built in the district in the uh, in, in many decades, there will be need uh, a need for some training for future operators and uh, and maintenance workers. So now I'll go into the actual uh, building itself for the car barn building. Uh, this is the first floor plan. The majority of the uh, building is a streetcar maintenance area, as you see on the plan. Um, the uh, pedestrian entrance to the building is uh, along Benning Road, and Benning Road, for your uh, information, is to the, uh, the bottom portion of this, uh, of this slide. Uh, there is a plaza, entry plaza, and then lobby for the building, as well as some offices. Um, on a lower level, I didn't show it, but on a lower level, uh, there are locker rooms for the uh, for employees. I'll also note that uh, there's a 10,000-gallon cistern um, that will be used to capture rainwater for stormwater management purposes. Um, and can be used for the uh, streetcar wash area, which is um, just to the uh, west of that. And it's on the top of the slide. Here's a second floor plan. Um, the uh, uh, main portion of this is, uh, is again, the, the, the streetcar um, maintain, maintenance area. Uh, this will allow, there's actually a platform which will, which will allow access to the tops of the uh, streetcar uh, themselves. And uh, there are some training rooms for the um, vocational training in here as well. Uh, this is the streetcar barn um, in elevation and section. Uh, the elevation is on the top. Uh, the C, uh, car barn training center exterior is a, a building that's 36 feet in height. Um, it is, uh, will incorporate brick, uh, veneer, metal panels, and, uh, and glazing or glass. The roof will incorporate skylights to allow for natural light to uh, enter the interior of the building. There are uh, photovoltaic or PV panels um, placed on the skylight areas to generate energy for the building. These panels are not anticipated to provide all of the energy requirements um, for the building, but uh, they'll be used in conjunction with some PV panels on the uh, transit power substation, uh, and they'll help to offset some of the energy needs for the, uh, for the site. Next, we have the traction power substation. Um, we have the, uh, uh, it's a few um, components to it. There are the, uh, the Pepco electrical box as well as the um, traction power substation itself. Uh, there, there's a green screen, um, vegetative screen for the, uh, for the site as well as photovoltaic panels uh, on, on the roof. DDOT has stated in its submittal that um, there are other substations that will be necessary along the line, uh, along the uh, one city line to provide necessary power for the streetcar vehicles. And that's what this, is, uh, this will be for. So um, in staff analysis, um, we, we find that the building and site are an appropriate response at this location. This building does front on a, a major uh, road, Benning Road, uh, which is in very close prox proximity to the one city transit line, uh, which it serves. While it is visible along the Benning Road and will be visible to surrounding land uses like Langston Golf Course, this design will incorporate a green screen to uh, help shield the views of the, the streetcar storage area. Um, I didn't uh, mention it, but the uh, green screens are going to be in integrated into the uh, security fence that goes around the, uh, um, the, the site. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Um, it's also being sited on a, an existing grassy area uh, that will only require the removal of a few trees. Um, I, I will note that there has been opposition to the project given the visual and, and noise impacts to nearby residential, educational, and, and recreational land uses. The district states that um, this site is a preferred one given its close proximity to the streetcar uh, line that it's um, constructing and uh, the fact that it, it actually owns the, uh, the land itself. Um, we support the district's goal of providing an alternative transit system to link the, uh, the city together, which will improve access for residents, workers, and visitors to all parts of the city. Um, and while we didn't identify any um, federal uh, concerns with the, the car barn and training center, this site is one component of a larger transit uh, streetcar system. The system will be composed of other elements, including streetcar barns, roadway improvements, overhead catenary wire systems, power substations, et cetera that will have um, some federal interest impacts, or that, that may have some uh, inter federal interest impacts. It is important for the Commission to understand this full con context before making uh, fi its final decision um, uh, about the, uh, the, the system itself. And um, with that, uh, it's the Executive Director's recommendation that the Commission approve the site and building plans for the DC Streetcar Bar and Training Center to be located at the corner of Benning Road and 26th Street and request that all above ground components of the DC streetcar system, including the final design of the streetcar barn training center, as well as additional car barns, traction, traction power substations, and overhead catenary wire systems be submitted for commission review prior to construction pursuant to NCPC's review authority. And with that, I conclude my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hart. Um, does the do commissioners have any burning questions of Mr. Hart? We do have some. Uh, witnesses signed up, but if you have some questions you want to clarify. Yeah, I just have one quick question. The um, action before us is preliminary approval of uh, site and building plans. So we will see a, a future the refined final. version of it. It's, uh, any idea when that will come? Um, I think we can ask the, uh, we have some DDOT representatives here. We can find out when that's. Uh, we're looking uh, in mid-2014 to begin submitting uh, that information for the okay. design. I think you need to state your name for the record. Excuse me. Uh, Thomas Perry. I am the program manager for D.C. Streetcar with the District Department of Transportation. Thank you. Uh, other, Mr. Hart. Am I, excuse me, am I correct in understanding that construction has already begun on the site? Yes. So... Why are we being review, reviewing a preliminary if it's already happening? There, there, are, there are two phases for the project. There's a phase that they're doing um, the site work, which is um, the, the tracks that they're, that they're putting in. The building is not going to be coming for, um, it's not going to be start, the, the construction is not going to start until next year. Um, and so they are coming for um, the building and kind of the, the stuff that's above ground. Um, they're doing work that's uh, uh, really primarily the, the, the track work. Um, just, for just to clarify, the actual building is still under design. The I understood this site. is for, for site and building preliminary. Okay. So we're being presented with a plan to review after the fact. Okay. I want yeah, to be clear yeah, about I, that. Yeah, it's, it is, it is, um, there, there is site work that, that is going on, and, that's, and, and what you're saying is correct. Are there additional questions uh, for Mr. Hart or DDOT at this time? Um, if not, we will um, move to the uh, public participation part of the meeting. Uh, we have five uh, persons signed up to speak. Uh, two are representing organizations and will have five minutes each to speak. And three are representing themselves as indivi individuals and will have uh, three minutes each to speak. Um, I would note for the witnesses that there's a clock on the wall uh, that will count down your time. And when the buzzer sounds, if you have not completed your comments, please sum up your comments uh, quickly. So uh, our first witness, uh, our first public speaker today is Mr. Walton Frazier, representing the Kingman Park Civic, Civic Association. I'd like to just clarify just one thing about uh, the site improvement and grading. We actually have not installed the uh, rail yet in the yard. We've only done the initial grading for that based on the permit. So I just wanted to establish that clarification. Thank you. Mr. Frazier, welcome. 
like to give copies of my testimony if I could. Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Fraser Walton, and I'm president of the Kingman Park Civic Association, the neighborhood associa association uh, that uh, we believe is being adversely impacted by the proposed construction of the car bond. I would first like to say that uh, I, want, I want to thank the commission for allowing me to uh, address you today. Uh, I know the outstanding work that you've done over the years. I've participated in quite a bit. And I just want to congratulate you for on your latest decision concerning the height limitations in the city. We agree with you 100%. I understand that this project uh, is coming before you. Uh, we look at the project every day, and I think the submission made by the city was that they have uh, addressed our association uh, and work with our association. That is not true. Uh, Mr. Perry has done a fine job coming to us after the fact. Uh, he has presented the district's position. Uh, he's done it in a very, uh, very deliberative, and he's given us specification. But when we have requested to speak with district officials, we've never been allowed to do that. We have personally sent certified letters to the mayor. He has never answered us. Uh, so we are very uh, unhappy with the way in which the city government uh, has proposed this uh, project. I'd like to begin by saying, uh, to conserve my time, that basically I have four interests that we have from the community standpoint. Uh, the first interest is the uh, water, storm water runoff that we believe is a problem and will be a massive problem, uh, or the groundwater runoff that's going to be collected by the cistern that the uh, government has presented. Uh, they have built what they call a retaining wall, and if you look at the retaining wall, and it's in, in our presentation. I'm sorry I don't have a PowerPoint for you, but uh, within this, this wall that they have proposed, uh, they have drainage holes because it's an actual stream that runs underground uh, and in this area. And uh, it actually comes from the National Arboretum. It comes down. And if you notice the water sitting here, and, and I'm sorry, I, don't, I, I didn't make enough copies for everyone, but the water drains in, and they know that's a problem. So they have placed the cistern on the other side of the down below the area, and you can see water sitting again there. Uh, the water actually flows from one end, they have it flowing from one end to the other and collecting. Now if, if this overflows, it's going to go into the street and it's also going to affect, we believe, homes and businesses on the other side of the street. In addition, in 2002, the U.S. Geological Survey conducted uh, site tests on wells in the area, one on Bennings Road specifically. And in the site testing, they determined that uh, the water contained cyanide, hydrocarbons, uh, volatile organic compounds, uh, and other contaminants that's in the water. Now, we are, we're going to use the same water that's going to be collected right in our neighborhood in this cistern for a car wash. And it's going to be dumped back into the Anacostia River. Uh, we really believe that that is a federal interest that the district has not addressed, and we wanted to address that with an environmental impact statement that we were never given the opportunity to do. And we think that's going to be of great concern uh, to the city in the future, uh, particularly when you're using certain oils and greases at this location, and they would have to use that for the streetcars uh, because they have wheels and ball bearings. Uh, in addition, we believe that the federal impact will also impact the Langston Terrace dwellings. They're putting an electrical substation within a few feet of people's bedrooms. Uh, and things that we didn't know 50 years ago, we know today. 
we believe that uh, the impact will be that electromagnetic uh, fields will be generated by 950 watts or 925 watts of electricity at the location, 750 watts of electricity moving along the lines between 8th Street and our community. We are not opposed to a streetcar. We're not opposed to a streetcar line. What we are opposed to is the location of the streetcar line on what we consider a beautiful open vista that will affect, I think my time is up, I'll sum up, that will affect the golf course because you'll have patrons at the golf course, you have school children, Two Rivers Academy has just located at Charles Young, you'll have hundreds of children moving near this location. And in summary, I'd like to present to you a warning sign that the federal government, I believe, requires, and of course, you can check that out, the uh, Occupational Health and Safety Administration requires this when there's electromagnetic radiation. It should be posted. Uh, and we believe that that's something that we know now that we didn't know 50 years ago, and I think it impacts uh, streetcars nationwide, not just in the district. So I hope that you deliberate on this, that you not uh, vote to approve it today and that you give it the serious consideration that you usually do with most projects. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you, Mr. Walton. Does anyone have any questions uh, for Mr. Walton? Wait, I hang on. Can we, um, can we hear DDOT um, address? I mean, this is kind of a he said, she said thing, so it's hard to know. Can you, can you? Um, Maybe we should do, do you want to do it now? Yeah. Okay. I do. Okay. Just because it there it raises a lot of questions and it's hard to know. Um, and, I mean, it's hard to know no, where would, to go. Okay. Yeah. We have four other witnesses. Can you address his claims that about the um, the water? Yes. The uh, my name is Thomas Perry. I am with uh, Department, the District Department of Transportation. Uh, I'd like to uh, respond to two of uh, Mr. Walton's claims. Uh, the first one is that we have not been engaged DDOT in the community. Uh, up until my tenure, which started uh, in July. That is uh, untrue. We've actually been out uh, in the community since uh, 2011 and definitely within Spingarn since uh, September of 2012. Uh, number two, the cistern system is a green recyclable system. There will be no harmful uh, contaminants put back into the Anacostia River. And uh, we've designed that system to make sure that uh, there are no uh, adverse environmental impacts. And, and <clears throat> so you were asked to do an EIS and you declined. What, what's the, I mean, I'd love to take your word for it, but I'm just gotcha. not that way. And the other thing is for any oh, other. Hold on. Okay. So, so what, what have you got beside, what have you got for documentation that the, that the water's not going to end up in the Anacostia River? Excuse me. Uh, do we uh, have, have, I mean. Uh, yes. Yeah. Good afternoon, Otto Conan with ZGF Architects. Uh, we're the design architects. Um, in terms of the stormwater management plan, there's actually several strategies. Uh, first, um, also to deal with the aesthetic issues of the tracks, um, we've we are showing that there will not be any sort of ballast used. There will be turf tracks in order to help with infiltration in the turf yard area. Um, in the Tracks leading up to the barn, there's actually permeable paving. Um, both those systems will be designed to collect the wa any water that infiltrates below to collect it and go into a, a, a quality and quantity stormwater um, system. We actually have two stormwater retention ponds, one um, to the north of the tracks, which um, collects both water from the uh, northwest of the site and actually some water from this, the uh, campus uh, to the north. Um, which will also feed into the uh, quality management system. And there's also a retention area that is on the corner of 26th and Benning um, for stormwater management. Uh, so in terms of the cistern, we're estimating that approximately 400,000 gallons of water, which would fall on the roof over the um, year, um, can be collected. It will be used for the vehicle system, uh, vehicle wash. Right now, as part of the design, we have 100% recycling, cleaning and recycling of the water mm -hmm. um, because as water, um, if it's used and it'll be sprayed, it has to be cleaned to a level that's 
near potable. Um, finally, any of the drains, um, <coughs> excuse me, for the um, maintenance area, they do actually have um, oil screens and filters so that anything that's going, you know, any spillage, um, you know, from the work areas will be cleaned and not actually just discharged into the, uh, the, river, the watershed. So, I mean, I think ultimately, you know, at this design level, all the stormwater that falls on the site and even some adjacent will be captured on the site. And, you know, maybe there's even the opportunity for the project to take advantage of some of the DDOE's more recent stormwater regulations in terms of exceeding the 1.2 inches of, of stormwater that is required to be retained and actually perhaps be a model for the uh, credit system that has been identified. And what's the capacity of the cistern? It is 10,000 gallons. And we actually anticipate that um, through cycling, that'll be used for the vehicle wash and also for a gray water um, flushing of the, the, of the office uses. There's also the intent as an educational facility that there will be monitoring for the water and also for the electrical uses, which will be part of the training center so that it can really be a, you know, a, a model for education for people to understand the benefits that all these investments will um, provide to the district and community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why don't we move on to our next uh, speaker, um, Mr. Har Harold Fisher, Jr. And we can come back and ask further questions uh, once the uh, speakers have completed their testimony. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Harold Fisher, Jr. I am a uh, member of the first graduating class, 1955 Spengarn High School. Uh, I'm a graduate of Howard University, a, a art major in design and uh, education. I have a bachelor's, a, a master's degree from uh, Bowie State uh, College in uh, administration and education and a teacher in the DC public school system for over 40 years. Uh, a prior to uh, or during that time I served as president of the Washington Teachers Union and uh, as vice president of the American Federation of Teachers. Um, I'm, I'm here for the first time. Uh, my schedule has not permitted me to come before this uh, board uh, before now. And uh, what I have uh, passed out to you, first of all, is a brief look at some of the Spengarn High School graduates, uh, primarily my class, because I'm not in contact with most of the others. But there are 35 people on there, some of whom you may recognize, with, who uh, graduated from the Spengarn High School. And uh, I will not uh, read uh, this uh, document that I've sent out, but uh, a couple of comments I'd like to make with regard to the presentation presented uh, uh, to you uh, by the city. I don't remember, and I've been in Ward 5 for quite a while, I don't remember the city ever coming to Ward 5 residents to uh, talk about this situation with regard to a car barn. Not ever, and I attend most meetings in Ward 5 where the city has something to say. I don't ever remember the city having such a meeting with the residents of Ward 5. I also would point out that this is not the first time that the city has tried to help someone to destroy the site of, of the Spengarn, Charles Young, Brown, and Phelps complex. And one time it was a football stadium. Another time it was take the golf course and make it a parking lot. All of these things are, are, are acting on the community and destroying uh, the value of the property. But most of all, it's destroying the education for our, for our children. Because when they go to school, they go to school at Spengarn, what they see around them is a situation that says that they are not worth receiving uh, an atmosphere that is uh, educational and that will allow them to become the best that they can be. Uh, the city has done a lot of poor planning here. Uh, they uh, sold the area that should be uh, the uh, maintenance section for this carbon to Pepco. 
That's down by uh, 32nd Street uh, Bidding Road. That's where the old car barn used to be before the city took up the rails uh, to get rid of streetcars. Well, Pepco has it now, so the city comes now to take the land away from the, the residential neighborhood around, around Spingar. Uh, I just heard uh, a, a presentation about uh, protecting the Anacostia and the Eastern Branch. Uh, the city has spent over the years millions of dollars cleaning up the Anacostia and the Eastern Branch and the islands that are there. And we still have not had that done completely. Yet we're talking about putting in place a building that is going to be dumping waste clean, you say? I don't know of any place where you clean waste well enough to maintain uh, the, the stability of an ecosystem. We haven't learned how to do that yet. Yet we're saying here. Lastly, you mentioned it. There is construction going on on the site now. This committee has not made its, its recommendations known. And yet the city is moving ahead, spending millions of taxpayer money, building on a site where they don't know whether or not you're going to approve it or not. They should look at Philadelphia. Philadelphia did a similar sort of thing. Now Philadelphia has torn up or is in the process of tearing up the streetcar lines. And they have said the worst mistake they ever made to bring the streetcars back and put them down and not do their homework. Mr. Fisher, uh, you're about two minutes you. over, but uh, if you have a concluding thought. Uh. Uh, yes, uh, the conclusion is do your homework. That's what I was always told by, the, by my teachers at Spengarn. That's what I always told teachers, and that's what I always told union members. Do your homework. The city hasn't done it. Thank you. Any questions for um, Mr. Fisher? I have another question, but not for Mr. Fisher. Do we know what the current, what, what the intended use of the, of the school is to be going forward since it's closed? What's the, what's the, what's going to happen to the building? Uh, we have heard uh, and understand that there have been conversations with uh, the state board that the status of the school, Spengarn, will be lowered from an academic high school to a, 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 a lower level. I think that's a crime. We have produced some of the top people in this country out of this high school, and the city now, through the, through the school, through the uh, chancellor and the mayor, are talking about reducing this school to almost a junior high school. They're talking about bringing the streetcar barn in and reducing the campus to a work area. That, to me, seems to be a betrayal of our children. My children have finished school. But I do worry about those who are coming afterward. It seems the city is not thinking about that. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Perry, did you want to comment on Ms. Commissioner Wright's question yes. since we established the precedent of? Yes, Thomas Perry with District Department of Transportation. Uh, one, I just wanted to clarify, Spingarn, uh, after the renovation, which I believe is north of $50 million, is going to be a new high school that is going to specialize in technology and transportation. Uh, the other thing I want to assure the uh, board about is we are not in the process of constructing uh, the building. We are only site grading currently out there on Spingarn's uh, site. There are no yard tracks in. Uh, the other thing I want to communicate about the purpose of what we see with uh, streetcar is if you look at the 30-year plan for the district, we have no new capacity coming into the city to establish roads, yet the district is forecasted to grow by leaps and bounds over those 30 years. Uh, streetcar as a uh, mobility system and economic uh, development engine is where we see the value. So I just wanted to communicate that. Thank you. Any thank other you. questions? No, thank you. Uh, our next witness is uh, Mr. Charlie Murray, Jr. 
please be mindful of the uh, clock on the far wall. You have three minutes to present. Right. <clears throat> My name is Charles L. Murray, Jr., and I'm a member of the uh, council that uh, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Frazier is speaking of, and I agree 100 percent what he said and presented to the uh, capital uh, board here. I'm glad to be here to explain. I oppose the uh, car bond period for be, being where it's set and located. I figure that it is a crime to take away from a historical site that it took 30 or 40 years to gain and to, for knowledge. And knowledge is something we need today. This car bond should have been located elsewhere. Well, not no study did before in the communities for this here. It should have been located some other place. As a whole, I do not think it's a good idea. It's after the fact that they had wrecked without a permit days, destroying it, and to come back later and don't have all the facts. It wasn't no study made through the community. And I think it should not have been taken away from such great place as we live in today, as we supposed to be humans and people of the earth, to let something be destroyed like it was destroyed. The waterway, the green, that will can be replaced. As a whole, I cannot really see the streetcar being a perfect thing for the future, but I can see that we already had achieved a school for knowledge and the campus that goes along with it for knowledge, something we barely need. The streetcar takes up too much room anyway. And it's an old idea. It was here before, and it was obsolete. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. But it should have been reconsidered and better studied than it was. It's a shame to see such beautiful plays go to run. The art was already there to bring along something that do not really have a good meaning. I want to thank you. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Mary. Uh, our next speaker is um, Ms. Patricia Tyson with the uh, Military Road School Preservation Trust and representing an organization. You have uh, five minutes to uh, present your testimony. Welcome to the commission. Thank you and good afternoon. I'm not really, you have a letter from me representing the Military Road School Preservation Trust, but I'm not really representing them or other organizations I'm rep I am affiliated with. I'm really here just speaking for myself today because that letter speaks for our organization. So I really only need three minutes, and I appreciate that. I am a native Washingtonian, and I was educated in the, I got my start in life in the DC public school system. I know the value of a good education, of a community that cares. In my lifetime, I see a, a group of young people in our country that are lost, that aren't necessarily understanding the real meaning of an education. An education gives freedom. An education helps one to help others. And that is something that's missing not only from our area here, but around our country. When I found out that um, Spingarn was going to be, the site was going to be used for uh, an industrial purpose, I thought, what a loss. A community that probably doesn't understand the real meaning of preserving their educational institutions and making sure their children are brought up with the history of the area. But I was wrong, and I'm very glad to see the community here is saying, please reconsider. I work as a volunteer at the Sumner Museum Archives, uh, which is the archives for the DC public school system. And there I learned a great deal, not only having been in the school system myself, but to see what the system had accomplished and to see what it can accomplish if it gets the right start and the right leadership. I just want to say thank you for in allowing me to speak. I appreciate the education I received here in the District of Columbia, and that is why I work 
um, with the preservation of a little old school I went to, which was not a high school, but an elementary school that gave me my start in life and made me the person that I am today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, our next uh, and final witness is uh, Mr. Dennis Bobo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I apologize if I have not. Welcome to the commission. I'd like to leave a copy of my testimony here. It does have one copy. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Dennis Bobo. I'm a resident of Washington, D.C., as well as a, a graduate of Charles Young, Brown, and Spingon, part of the campus in Northeast. Uh, Spingon has graduated numerous people, doctors, lawyers, preachers, teachers, all over the world, and yet, yet it's in a state of destruction. I have a, submitted Uh, a, a letter of uh, basic concern, and I will talk about my professional uh, qualifications. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer by training, BS. I got a master's in information systems, a master's in uh, uh, real estate, and a master's in marketing. And I also uh, want to express that I've done uh, extensive work as an engineer, electrical engineer consultant. Uh, environmental engineer, uh, information systems, uh, um, and, and government marketing. You know, to make a long story short, it is, is that the environmental impact uh, has not been conducted. I think the panel has this EIS, the environmental impact statement. And, and so what, what happens is, is that by being no environmental impact statement, there are a lot of issues involved with regard to this project. There's environmental, there's economic, there's legal, there's social, there's educational, residential, pedestrian, transportation service, car service, parking lanes, bicycle lanes, et cetera, radiation. All these are basically environmental, part of the environmental impact statement. None of them have been done. You can't take somebody's word that they're going to do this when, when those are supposed to be requirements. You know, as, as far as the car burn is concerned, uh, the alternative to a car burn is use natural gas buses and extend your commuter uh, uh, buses to Bennett, Bennett Road and, and, and A Street, and that, that will minimize the cost in terms of correcting the damage that has been done, and it's more so, when, when you look at Spangarn, you, you, Spangarn is torn up outside. So what, what you've heard is, is not what it is. You have, to, you have to take your own pictures. I suggest that Spangarn actually restore, I mean, the, the district government restore uh, the, the site to its original purpose. And, and make the necessary corrections to so, so it's a win-win situation on both sides, as far as the community and as well as the district government. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Appreciate Bell. it. Thank you, Mr. Bevo, for your testimony. Thank all of the uh, public witnesses uh, for your uh, commitment to the city and for your thoughtful testimony today. Uh, this this completes our public participation part of the meeting, and we will now bring the deliberation back to the commission. Um, let me just ask Mr. Perry just uh, just initially to, to address two um, two issues. Uh, if you could just go over again, um, since they were raised by the public testimony, um, uh, what the level of community engagement has been mm -hmm. uh, briefly, and um, what uh, what go over again what the educational and training component of this project is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, first and foremost, our engagement has been going on since uh, 2011. And we've had all of that uh, public engagement documented via Title VI. As a matter of fact, um, I have my uh, uh, PR consultant here, Ian Swain, who can attest to that. And we'll forward all of this documentation to the commission uh, if need be. As far as the uh, educational uh, portion of the building, we essentially are allowing space in terms of the actual programming for that. 
that is yet to be developed, albeit we do have a concept of how we want to uh, execute the program. But that's still a to-be-determined program. But we do know that uh, we have that as a requirement moving forward. Could you share that with us? Uh, the concept for the vocational training, well, this is uh, essentially the place where we're going to maintain uh, and service the vehicles. Uh, those are essentially jobs that uh, we're going to need people that are trained to maintain and serve, service streetcars. And that's everything from the maintenance and cleaning of the streetcars, uh, changing out various parts as need be within the system, and all that's going to be conducted here at the site, as well as providing a uh, building facility uh, for the site. So that's the program's focus is going to be surrounded around streetcar. And as I recall, the con that concept also includes, I mean, it's, it's training for, dis it's for district residents and, and in particular for residents of the surrounding yes. community. Yes, and part of the hope is to also engage uh, the new Spingarn High School. Thank you. Does anybody have any further questions of Mr. Perry from DDOT at this time or any or further discussion? Ms. White? Um, just a brief question about your analysis, which mm -hmm. it says you conducted that, and I know an EIS has been brought up, so I just wanted to give you an opportunity to speak to that. Uh, we have uh, executed all necessary environmental re reviews uh, for this area and for the H Street corridor as required by law. Um, as far as the level of uh, environmental review, uh, we've looked at both uh, the categorical exclusion for this particular area. Yeah, I just want to clarify. So um, in the you, you were required to, to follow NEPA in order to do this project, or is it is it one of those projects that because it's all district funds, you don't have to do NEPA? Well, the district has a uh, local environmental review process I that was applicable to this because we do have a federal money. For the overall concept of the 22 miles, we are using uh, the NEPA process. Okay, so, but as it relates specifically to the car barn. Yes. Did you have to comply with NEPA because there is federal money in it or not? That's a sort of yes or no. Oh, no, we actually don't have to legally comply because right. there is no federal uh, component. No, no federal component. There's no, no federal, federal money, money within it. So there's it. no, no need for an environmental assessment or an environmental Well, well assessment. other than the local. I, I, I'm, okay. I'm using the federal I got NEPA no. term. No, there's no requirement. There's I know no you requirement. have to do an EISF and all that sort of internal district screening. No, there's no legal requirement in that regard. Right. Okay. Commissioner Trigoni. Um, I also just wanted to thank the, the folks who came out to testify today, and I really appreciate um, the concerns that they express and the deep reverence and respect that they, in which they hold the, uh, the, the Spingarn uh, campus, um, the, the Education Hill that's, that's an important part of the history of our city, um, so much so that we designated it, the entire campus, as a, a district historic landmark um, in November of 2012 and so um, and I will also acknowledge that uh, candidly that the initial plans for the car barn um, were very very much look like an industrial intrusion into that campus and I'm, I'm I, I don't blame you for being alarmed I, I would uh, point out that uh, since that time, I, I feel that the Department of Transportation has really stepped up to provide a civic building, not an industrial building, but a civic building that, that is worthy of such a historic site that helps to continue the, condition, the, the tradition of education that this campus has been so known for. It's going to be an exemplary building, the first of its kind in many ways in the District of Columbia like no other. And it'll be a place where lots and lots of young people come through and learn all about the latest technology, all about both for transportation, but also for green building. For stormwater management, we have the most stringent stormwater regulations in the entire nation. And this building is going to be an example of how those things can be accommodated um, and even celebrated. It's going to be very visible. Um, it's, a, it's a civic building in the, in the way that our infrastructure used to be civic. You know, if you look at the, uh, at the D.C. water pumping stations, you know, the one near Howard University, how gorgeous that building is. I mean, we haven't built that kind of civic infrastructure in a really long time. Uh, this is intended to, to be a, a restart of that tradition where we have buildings that we're proud of, the buildings that 50 years from now that will want a landmark in and of their, 
on their own behalf, not just because they're part of a historic campus. So I really respect what you had to say today, and, and I think that the, uh, at least now, the district is really taking uh, much, much, much greater care to uh, show this building and this site the respect that it deserves, and, and very deliberately <coughs> trying to continue the fine tradition of education that so characterizes this part of the city. So thank you again for coming. Commissioner Dixon. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, I also, uh, first of all, I'm pleased to see some faces that came before us today from the Spangon area. It's good to know that some folks are still around uh, <laughs> and, and, and active. Yeah. <laughs> hey, what can I say? Um, I also uh, want to, uh, uh, a number of years ago, and I mentioned this, uh, I voted a, I had to vote on Dunbar High School. And uh, that moved on, and we have a new Dunbar coming that I think is going to be very, very, very special. In some ways, that's going to recognize the history of that school in a way that, that really will be meaningful. I'm, I'm sorry we didn't keep some facade of the old school, but that's done now. Um, I also, the, old, old the old, old, old school. Not, 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 yeah, not, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Thank you. I'm dating already. I'm the first school. Um, also, uh, I'm pretty familiar with Spengon and, and, and uh, you, you, you didn't put on your list some of the athletic folks who came out of your school that maybe, maybe would have gotten some more of our attention, and there were many. Uh, oh, well, being on the list, well, there's a few others. Maybe they weren't as, as but there are others, many. Um, I really think that this is a, and I think the school system, I don't know, I'm assuming they've, they're waiting on this a bit, but, you know, I really believe that uh, we got to move forward on some of these things. And I know that um, this whole transportation issue is critical because in Anacostia East to the River, we're troubled by the trolleys coming in with cables, period, which is enough, not on the table at this time. Uh, maybe we could have swung a deal if we could have found a way to put the, the barn over in our neighborhood to accept those cables and maybe we could charge those vehicles in that barn and not have to go through cables, but that's not on the table now. Uh, I do think that the project has a lot of potential for our community for the future. I mean, I taught, and you all know what I've been involved in, teaching at Armstrong, and I've been, I was a proponent of the vocational program at WTI for years, because you got to give young people skills. Maybe the, uh, the, the bachelor's and all those degrees are great, but if you can't, don't have skills to do something where, where you, can, you can get hired right away. So I think this is the kind of movement we have here. And transportation is going to be a big problem in our city, and one that I think the trolleys are trying to address. Uh, in terms of their cost, electrical use, as opposed to fuel of any kind, natural gas, or what have you. And if this school is built and designed with the program, which I hope it will be, uh, around uh, preparing young people for a new transportation technology that's coming into play, this will be a global kind of a help, not just the national or local, but global uh, training. Uh, and I have to remember, I was one of the first five faculty members hired at WTI we started that school, and I designed the entire computer curriculum, the one that they're still teaching, selected the books, the whole thing. And I know then we were transitioning from paper to computers, and we as a community were at the vanguard of that because we are getting fired, and we got rehired running computers, programming them, and moving into this new generation. I think that's the same thing that might be happening here with transportation. So. I hope that we will not destroy that campus. I used to caddy at Langston and play golf there. That's so my father learned how to play golf at 40. So I know that area very well. And I would not want anything to be done to it that would be that detrimental or harmful. But I do think that the project uh, has a lot of merit. And my vote as I move forward will be weighed with your, with your comments in mind and appreciate it, but also some recognition that we might have to think about the future, too, and try to get our young people, the ones that are not getting and don't have the kind of drive and initiative that you gentlemen and you ladies came with, but need new, new, new nurturing and new focus, need to be tied to new technologies and new educational systems. And so I'm going to have to uh, just want to share that with you. I appreciate you coming out, and I, I heard you. Commissioner Perancha. A couple of questions, please. Thank you. Appreciate the uh, uh, staff report letting us know that this was a two-acre site. I'm impressed with the conceptual design. That it's a, a very compact uh, and it looks like efficient use of that uh, of that small space. Uh, back on the issue of the the the, the zone, uh, the term Education Hill was used earlier, 
and it said included the high school, a Votex school, as well as an entry, elementary school. Now, only the high school is off limit, uh, offline at this time, undergoing this $50 million renovation. Is that correct? The Votex school and the elementary school are, still exist and are active? Uh, yes, I believe that's correct. And the intent, the conceptual intent, is to make, as Spingarn is renovated and has a technical and transportation and Votex uh, influence, there would be a direct linkage between this new new facility as well as the, the yes that is the programming concept I applaud that concept I'm familiar with that uh, I spent a few years at NIH and the concept we use is we would bring in uh, uh, leading experts in various aspects of maintenance and design and they would do a section of uh, training in the classroom and then they would go out immediately adjacent to uh, a, a maintenance area and get to apply the, the skills that they had just learned whether it's generator maintenance or, or piping systems or valves or pumps or so forth so the proximity from the classroom directly out to the uh, to the yard, I think, is uh, is is optimal and can uh, can can be leveraged. Um, concerned about a couple of environmentally related things, I thought I heard that this presentation said there would be a green screen around the car storage yard, but I didn't have a good sense of the entire landscaping buffer, if you will, around the site to not only preserve the access and proximity to the school complex and the educational hill campus. Uh, I'm less concerned about the, the uh, golf course, more concerned about Langston Terrace, as well as the folks across the street on the south side of Benning Road, the proximity, because if you have an industrial operation, you're going to have noise and odors and welding work and hazardous materials and uh, lubricant stored, uh, flammable materials and so forth. So there is, while it, it is a, a, also a training center, there's still some industrial operations that present some, some risks. Uh, again, back on the issue of uh, buffering, in addition to the green screen just around the storage yard corner, is there a, a, a landscaping buffer around to, to a little bit more isolate and not only protect the campus but also the, uh, the neighborhood? Uh, yes, uh, yes, that is a fact. And uh, if uh, you'd like uh, more uh, information, I can have uh, Otto Condon speak directly about that, the uh, architect from ZGF. Okay, we have the uh, image of the, the, the plan here. Um, thanks. Once again, Otto Kahn with ZGF Architects. Uh, the green screen is um, actually a, a combination of green screening and ornamental metal fencing, similar to what is used in other schools. Uh, on the perimeter, um, essentially the north and the west, um, which has some grade changes, that's more of a, a traditional, I'll say, ornamental um, picket fence, black metal. Um, along the Benning and 26th Street um, uh, elevations of facades, and actually turning the corner uh, where it says streetcar storage yard. What we've done is taken the green screen and the, um, the, the ornamental fence and did a more of a sort of a staccato pattern and in order to frame some views. In one case, the view um, back to the greenhouse addition of the Spingarn campus, that was considered really critical for uh, from the um, uh, State Historic Preservation Office. So we started to, you know, think how we wanted to screen some things, but also frame views of the school itself. Um, and also with our input from the, the, um, the, the agencies to, you know, we didn't want to necessarily want to totally screen the site because there is things that people could see. Um, in terms of the landscape plan, you'll see that uh, um, a perimeter buff buffer of landscape um, looking at, um, you know, low maintenance, um, zero uh, irrigation type plantings. There is some slope to it. Um, the site actually will rise up uh, a bit um, through the grading. And the landscape itself will actually create a podium of landscape similar to how um, Spingarn building itself is on a podium of landscape. Um, so there is a ground cover. Um, and then also uh, trees are used, both deciduous and coniferous trees, in order to uh, create screening. So there's some berming that would help with sound attenuation? Yeah. OK. I had some questions about the. Um the traction power substations, um, what, I, I couldn't get a sense for the size of that particular structure. Uh, well, for this, would, it this 14 particular. 14 and a half for the car barn. What's the, what's the, the size of the footprint for a TPSS? Uh, roughly about 60 by 25, and it does vary. At this site, I believe, is 60 to 25. Okay. The staff report talks about three of those, I guess, along the, the this 2.2 2 .2 mile segment. Is that correct? Do I read that? Yes, that is correct. That works out to be what? One per, for every seven tenths of a mile. If you look across the entire 22 mile system, that would be 30 of these TPSSs spread out 
mm -hmm. across the system approximately every seven tenths of a mile. Is that correct? More like a half. I, a mile. I think we'll half, half a mile. I think we'll so hear some about something about this when we, we get the full presentation of Just the. Starting uh, to get a, a sense of how many structures we're going to be dotting the landscape throughout the uh, throughout the area. And, and to answer that, roughly twenty to thirty would be kind of a good ballpark, but. Commissioner Trinacone, did you have something to add on that question? I did, if I might. Sure. Um, so we're actually doing a study right now with DDOT mm -hmm. to look at the entire system and to look at locations that could be within development sites. So they could be underground, they could be within garages. We're looking to give developers, um, uh, you know, credit um, for for uh, allowing these structures to be placed, so that they won't necessarily be always part of the landscape. Um, and they'll be more likely to be underground. So we're, we're trying to do that now in advance of, uh, of any kind of construction to look at opportunities for, for those uh, structures to be at other places and, and, and not uh, necessarily always above ground. Although I'd know that at least, uh, I think all three of the structures that are associated with this first line are above ground. Uh, no, actually uh, the one at 2nd Street is in the abutment of the Hopscotch Bridge. Uh, then there's one on 12th Street that uh, will be screened uh, and will pretty much look like the building that is beside. You uh, will not necessarily uh, recognize it as being just kind of out. And then this is the third one that we also have uh, slightly screened and uh, uh, set back in the site. Help, help us uh, remember, too, about the uh, overhead catenary wires. The entire system will depend on those wires, or, or in some segments there will be underground powers mm -hmm. and or batteries? Uh, right here in this initial phase, it's uh, all uh, o overhead contact system wiring. Okay. Uh, but as we move forward, uh, we're going to be, one, looking for off-wire technology as a requirement as we go through the LaFont plan. And uh, the hope for the long-term hope of the system is to have off-wire for the entire system. Uh, staff up on the site, I'm deducing it, the, the report says uh, 25 parking spaces, one for every two employees, so approximately 50. Mm -hmm. Employees intended to, to be working on the car barn site. Is that yes, from my understanding, for operations, those are our projections. So the parking would be one for every two, one parking space for every. We would be remiss if we didn't bring up parking ratios. Uh, yes, uh, fulfill so. that expectation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Last question was about uh, zoning. This is a, a residential uh, use zone R5B. Is that that's what my research? Uh, that, it's uh, it is R5. B and uh, and um, mass transit facilities are permitted uses in the uh, residential zones and all the R zones. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, um, I just had a quick file. Does that, uh, do we want to? Okay. Does that, may I entertain a motion for the executive director recommendation, or to just put it on the table, or do you, you want to, Commissioner Wright? Yeah. You're, you're shaking your head. Yeah. I'm taking I'm my sorry. guidance from you. Uh, I, I, I'm. I'm I don't, somebody needs to explain to me why this has, I mean, even if you're just grading, you're already doing site work, so why are we looking, why are we being presented with, uh, with preliminary site and building plans if the work's already started? That makes me feel like there's a little something going on when the, when the neighborhood um, witnesses say, they they don't they D dot says they've been engaged in the community since 2011, but but according to the people here who took their time to show up, it sounds like you didn't. Okay. And 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 so the the things and the fact that we're looking at this and the work's already clearly begun makes me feel like there's a little something going on that we're not really clear on. So can somebody convince me that this is all on the up and up? Because mm -hmm. it's not feeling right to me. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, first of all, um, uh, let me state, uh, in terms of our public engagement, we've documented that. And uh, actually, we can send any information documenting that and who attended that meeting. As a matter of fact, uh, in March of this year, uh, my consultants facilitated a meeting with uh, Mr. Walton and his group as well as Monica Hernandez with uh, the director. Okay, uh, but let me stop you because okay. just showing up in a community and saying that you did, I mean, I can go and have a meeting as mm -hmm. a Fed somewhere and say, well, dang, we posted it and nobody came, you know, well, it no, sucks to be you. But that's mm -hmm. not, that doesn't, 
it, I mean, so so these people are saying you didn't talk to them in a meaningful way. So let's make the threshold. It was it, is has there been meaningful engagement? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say yes. Just showing up on, isn't meaningful. Well, true, right? True, definitely right. But in terms of engagement, in terms of uh, making sure that they were aware of what our plans were and uh, essentially canvassing their input. Uh, we've been out there in the community and we do have that document and I'll be more than happy to forward that documentation to you and the ways in which we have been meaningful. And, and I'd be inclined to believe you, mm -hmm. but for the fact that we're sitting here looking at this mm -hmm. um, and work's already begun and, and it's being called preliminary site and building approval. Well, I just don't get that. Well, let me be clear. The, the grading of the site uh, has uh, been in execution because right now we do have uh, the main line that we're building. But I as far as the that. actual uh, structure and the facility, we have not done that. But you're grading and clearly. The photographs show mm -hmm. this is not just about laying down tracks in the roadway. Mm -hmm. So it feels like an opportunity foreclosed upon. You know, like this is, we're just here as the rubber stamp and we're supposed to say, uh-huh. And, and that does, I, I, I hate that. And if I lived there, I would hate that too. It would feel really disingenuous to me mm -hmm. that you're, you're here seeking approval for something you've clearly already begun and we're just supposed to say, uh-huh. Well, and meanwhile, well, mm -hmm. the, neighbor, the neighborhood is showing up and saying, uh-uh. And and I you know I don't blame them for that I I mean and and, and m most people's I mean there's this is a well documented phenomenon where people don't want any stuff like this in their mm -hmm. neighborhood oh that's not a surprise either but you see how the two stories don't seem to reconcile Commissioner Wright can I just yeah I alluded to some of the issues um, earlier when I when I spoke so let me see if I can help you understand what happened along the timeline. The original, there were, there were many sites looked at for a possible car barn, including looking across the street at, at, uh, at NPS properties along the, in, in, with RFK and all of that, that, that whether or not um, this site gets approval, the idea would be on an interim basis that uh, you'd be able to temporarily store trains there. So the grading has to do with being able to pull the trains off the street when they're not running, okay? So, so if, if the approval doesn't happen, uh, and there are many approvals that have to happen, if the approvals don't happen, uh, then an alternative site will be sought somewhere else. This will become a temporary facility. But the design of the initial building was appalling to many people, uh, appalling. And I give DDOT a lot of credit to listening to what people said that, that this site deserved a better building, a much better building. So they've been working on designing a building that went from adequate for their solely functional purpose to a true civic building that, that accomplishes a lot more than simply storing uh, and maintaining streetcars. So that's been the process. And it's really literally involved going entirely back to the drawing board to come up with a very different concept for this building. So that explains kind of the timing. So site selection, site selection is a done deal. It just this is the preferred site, right. but this is not the, a, a fully approved design. It's the preferred site. But I can let... DDOT speak to other things with respect to other sites, but yes, the, there was a lot of question about what site or sites might be appropriate, interim and final. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hart. Yes. Um, Mr. Hart, was the commission consulted uh, during the site selection process where other sites were being uh, dismissed and this ended up being the preferred site? It's not my, um, it's my understanding that we were not. Uh, that, I thought that the commission was intended to work jointly with the district in, in a collaborative way in coming up with these results. And, and like Commissioner Wright mentioned, I feel that we're being asked to rubber stamp something. Mm -hmm. And it's not preliminary. I mean, the, the original design that uh, Commissioner Trigoning is talking about would, in my mind, be a preliminary uh, 
view of, of the building and the site, we're being presented with a final site plan, final building plan for all practical purposes. And this isn't the only time we've been asked to rubber stamp a, you know, something that's come before us. It, it always disappoints me that, you know, we're, we're seen as the tail on the dog, not of the head. And um, I can't feel comfortable uh, rubber stamping something. So uh, unless I hear something different, I'm not going to vote to approve this. Okay. Well, well, let me just say, in terms of the expectation for you all to rubber stamp, that's not our expectation nor our intent for here. As I mentioned before, we have only been doing preliminary grading and siting. We have not installed any rail in that yard. We have not installed any of the building. The only thing that we have done is to stabilize the site. So I just wanted to confirm that. Uh, Commissioner White. I just have a question of clarification. Are we, is NCPC approval required for an interim site? Maybe I could ask the, uh, uh, it's, it's my understanding that the uh, approval authority is, it's a, it's a project outside of the central area, so there's a consultative uh, advisory process that's supposed to go on, and, and, and if, if, if the DDOT in this case doesn't, doesn't, doesn't respond, they have to formally respond to any issues raised by the uh, uh, commission is my understanding under that consultative process, but Ms. Schuyler, if no, I you're correct. You're correct, Mr. Chairman. It, this is um, this is not this is a, a consultation. You do not have approval authority. You can consult with them. You can take a position. They can accept your advice, or they could reject your advice. If they choose to reject it, they do have to come back and ex or, or send you some correspondence indicating why they've rejected your advice. And they are then free to go forward and do what they can do legally under the law. Okay. Um, Commissioner May, did you have something further? Um, I, this is a very, very strange sensation, but I'm getting the, getting the feeling that while, you know, doing things uh, under the NEPA process with an EA can really be good sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. The, uh, the, the one question I have for Mr. Perry is, um, was this presented to the Advisory Neighborhood Commission? Yes. And how many times? Uh, just, uh, do we have a... You, you, you come to... Identify yourself for the record and... Good afternoon. My name is Ian Swain. I'm with the D.C. Streetcar Program as part of the public engagement. We've been working on the project for, since 2011. And to answer your question, sir, yes, we have uh, presented from the ANCs and also the county council, uh, I'm sorry, the city council, uh, um, Councilman McDuffie also is aware of it and been at meetings as well. We have attended more than uh, 60 or so community meetings from civic okay, associations. I'm just okay. specifically about ANCs. Yes, yes. So multiple ANCs. And did the ANC with jurisdiction over this specific, specific site take a vote to approve or endorse in any fashion? My understanding, they have not taken a vote to approve or endorse. They have, they have stated their displeasure with the site um, uh, location, but in favor of the streetcar. Okay. And have they, have they produced a re resolution opposed? No, they have not. Okay. Not to they, our did knowledge. Did they testify at HPRB? Uh, yes, the, uh, the single member district uh, um, commissioner, yes, she did. Okay. All right. Um, the last question I have is just, I mean, this is a, a relatively, I mean, this is a more technical one, oh. so not a <laughs> public engagement one, uh, which is that um, uh, Mr. Goni's comments about the location of, of, of TPSS structures throughout the system implies that this could be located underground or within the building. And uh, I'm wondering why it's not underground or in the building in this circumstance. In this particular circumstance, uh, expense uh, would be a concern, just looking at it from a technical standpoint. Uh, not be, being initially with the design, uh, maybe that's a question I think, Otto, I don't know if you could maybe answer. Specifically I mean, I, I can understand obvious cost reasons why a simple building when you have enough land, but if one of the concerns is from the neighbors is the location of that particular facility. Maybe it makes sense for that to be incorporated into the training center rather than in its own little satellite building. So explain why it's not. Um, again, Otto Connor was EGF Architects. Um, in terms of the 
that particular um, unit. It's actually 20 by 40. It's a prefabricated unit. Um, that's similar to along this line the, the units that are being um, included. Uh, part of it was essentially, you know, I mean, it's square footage wise, we actually didn't look at it as part of the building. But in that particular site, because of the grading, we've actually been able to um, build a retaining wall. So it's partially, it's, it is half buried. Um, or half retained um, on the, the west and north sides. Um, mm -hmm. the, the enclosure itself, is, as Thomas mentioned, is about 25 by 60 feet, which also includes the Pepco transformer, which did also have to be outside. Um, so, you know, I think um, I can say that we, we didn't look at incorporating it within the building, um, given the, the type of unit it was. Um, but we did try to mitigate it by starting to, to half bury it into the, I'm using retaining walls, into the site. Okay, so is it, I mean, is this unit different from the ones that um, uh, Commissioner Trigoning suggests might be incorporated into other buildings yeah, along uh, the rest of the system? Yeah, um, you know, there's, you can either do essentially a prefabricated unit um, uh -huh. which has um, exterior access to the electrical cabinets, or you can buy individual cabinets and build an enclosure for them. And as, as uh, Commissioner Trigoning mentioned, on other systems, um, you know, they have been placed into parking structures, on roofs, um, underground um, in sidewalk vaults um, so there with each line and with each site constraint there's a different way that substations really have to behave differently um, as part of the uh, how where they're sited so there are there are options and even I will go back to probably 2010 when we started the initial um, studies for this, the facility and we held intra-agency workshops with um, staff from Commission of Fine Arts, um, Office of Planning, DDOT, um, NCPC to really identify what the principles were for um, all the infrastructure that might be included in terms of how a car barn might behave in different communities, whether it's um, in a more residential area, whether it's in more mixed use, and all the adjacent um, uh, facilities such as the, as the, um, the attraction park substations. So that was... Um, you know, those, those principles were established or, or developed um, to help to guide some of these decisions. So, did, I mean, out of that, was there a recommendation that in a circumstance like this that it should be a satellite building or, it, or that it could be? It could be a separate building in a circumstance like this. I mean, you know, yeah. to me it seems like it's boiling down to an issue of cost because if you're trying to do this, you know, uh, in a more developed, developed part of town, the cost of acquiring the real estate to put, plop down a 20 by 60 building yeah. um, is much greater than the cost of an integrating that into an existing structure of some sort or a, a, a new structure that's going to be built. And here you're dealing essentially with an open field. You know, you can, you can park it there because it's easy to park there. So I, I, mean, I guess I'm answering my own question. Well, you know, actually, I, I guess that's a really great question. Um, I, mean, I wasn't asked as to that at the time, and it was it was looked at as this was a right. Well, and, and, so, and, and so. you know, again, this shows the benefit of, of a, a different kind of process for getting public input, because if you'd heard more about community concerns, maybe it wouldn't have wound up there, and maybe it would have wound up in the building. Thank you. Uh, may I entertain a motion to approve the uh, executive director's recommendation? Is there a second? I'll second it. Is there further discussion uh, amongst the uh, commissioners uh, on this on this motion? Hearing none, all, uh, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Uh, okay. By a show of hands, all, all in favor, raise your hand. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Uh, all opposed, please signify by raising your hand. One, two. Uh, are there any uh, abstentions? Are you officially an abstainer? Or, uh, for the, he's, he's recused, so he's not even not participating at all. Okay. Uh, the, motion, the, the motion passes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, is this, this is the last time we will see this, is that correct? No. This is uh, the preliminary approval. There's oh. Mr. Harkin. There, there, this is a Sorry, this is a preliminary approval, and uh, they will be back for the final approval. So it's the last time we've approved the location. Um, yes. Yeah. We're not really approving the location. We're just approving. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I would like to wish 
my fellow commissioners and the public and the staff of uh, NCPC a safe and happy holiday season. Uh, this concludes the open session agenda. Uh, and if there is no other business uh, from the commission, uh, this, this open session is adjourned. Thank you.